Hey guys, I'm going to be going over the Functions Lab 1, question 6 right now. Um, this is the bus under the rainbow question. Um, so we should get an output that looks something like this. It doesn't have to be exact, but we'll try to get um, as close as we can. And as you see, the bus just kind of runs through the screen, and once it hits uh, the end and gets completely out of the screen, it comes up on the other end. Um, so let's get started with this one. So we'll start with our void setup and our void draw. Um, we will make the size, I'll make the size a bit bigger because I kind of I like to have a big picture when I'm drawing. Um, then we'll come in here and we'll make our background color 255. Um, so the first thing that I think we should do is um, look at drawing the rainbow since that's just a static part of the image. Um, so that'll probably be the easiest thing to start out with. Um, so I'm going to create a new function to draw the rainbow. Again, there are a couple different ways that you can um, code this question. Um, heaps of different algorithms that you could be using. Um, this is just the one that I think is easiest and that kind of makes the most sense to me. But if your code works, it's totally fine. Um, so for this one, when I saw the output, I kind of saw um, parts of a circle. Um, so when I first did this, I um, kind of just drew different size circles, and each circle had a, um, a different stroke and just had a really, really thick stroke, and then the center of it was white. Um, so that's kind of how I saw, um, like, the first circle was here. Um, and it went to the edge of the screen, and then we did do the orange circle and then the yellow circle. Um, and they all just kind of overlap onto each other until we get this purple circle, and the center of it is white. So that's how we get the same, um, or we get back to our original background color. Um, so we'll start with doing that. Uh, so I think the first thing we need to do is determine the colors. Um, and there's actually this really great um, variable type that's called color that we can uh, try using. So I'm just going to go ahead and start um, creating the color variables. So a color variable takes, um, it starts with this color, so same as like an integer, boolean, a float, anything like that. You start with the type, which is a color, and then you give it the name. So we'll give the first one um, the name C1 and this will be our outer red and then you just put in your RGB values into it. So we'll specify that this is our red. And then we'll make another color. Uh, that'll be our orange and I don't exactly know the uh, code for orange so we will just come into here and we'll select a nice orange color. We'll do a nice bright one. So we've got here 255, 207, and 33. Um, and then we'll just do this for all of our colors. So we'll come into here and get a nice yellow. So some of these we already know just because of RGB values. Um, some of them we have to actually go in and figure out. So we'll get a nice purple color. Do the last one is like a pink. All right. 
So now we can create um, one more color variable C, which is going to represent, um, which is what we'll insert into um, the fill function for when we actually draw the circle. So we can get rid of that now. Um, so now I think the easiest way to um, go through and draw our ellipses is just with a for loop. Um, so that's going to allow us to just run through the for loop so that way we don't have to um, actually sit here and write out ellipse every single time. So we'll create our new variable i started at 0. We'll say once i is less than 7 because we're going to have 7 different colors. And then i++. Plus plus. So now in here, first we have to determine what color we're on. Um, so this is just going to be, let's just say determining the colors here. So this is just going to be a bunch of if statements, really. We'll say if um, i is equal equal to 0, then c is going to equal c1. We'll say else if i is equal equal to 1, then c is going to equal c2. We'll just copy and paste this to kind of speed things up a bit. So we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, so we'll say we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, Uh, for this last one, it'll just be an else statement. So if i is in 0 through 6, it must be 7. Um, so we'll just put in our last 6, 7. Oh, I see here. So this is our last else statement. So now determining what part of the for loop we're on, we'll just make that stroke. We're going to take our variable C, we're going to um, put in whatever color we want it to be, and then we'll make C our stroke. Uh, for our stroke weight, um, I'm actually going to create a new variable um, depending on the width of our screen, um, so I'll just call it stroke w. I'm going to get an integer. I'm going to equal it to, we'll say, width over 10. Um, so this is allowing it so if we change the width of the screen, then it'll still work. So now we're going to come back down here. Um, we're going to say the stroke weight is stroke w. And stroke w can be a local variable because we don't really need it anywhere else in the code, so we can just keep it within. Um, we can keep it within this function. So now we'll say no fill um, because we want the background color to uh, show through once we get to the purple. And then we're going to draw our ellipse, and we want the center of the ellipse to be in the bottom right corner. So we're going to put the x and the y values at width and height. And then here I'm also going to create another um, variable for the diameter. I'm going to get an integer, and I'm going to equal it to the width times 2. Because we know that we, we want um, the radius of it to be the length of the screen. So to get that full diameter, we need to multiply that by 2. And again, that can be a local variable because we, we, we don't need it anywhere else in the code. All right, and then once we draw that ellipse, so we'll go through, we'll draw the red, um, we'll um, put that in, and then we have to decrease our diameter. So we're going to subtract the diameter by the stroke times 2. So that's going to get it so um, the diameter is decreasing enough 
so that the entire stroke for each circle can be seen um, when we draw our new circle. So we've created this rainbow function. We can test it and make sure everything looks okay up here in our draw. So we know that for every frame, we're gonna need the rainbow to be redrawn. So we'll just call a rainbow. The rainbow doesn't need any inputs um, because it's just gonna stay the same every single time. So we can run this and we get our rainbow. Um, so you can go through and now you know, you can clearly see in your function, if you want any of the colors changed, it's really easy to see um, what color is going where. It's really easy in here to see um, uh, where the color of the ellipse is actually being set. Um, and then you can clearly see um, each circle being drawn. Um, so you could actually shorten this up a bit if you wanted to go off on your own. Um, and you could probably use compound data for this and make an array with each color and then setting each color. So then in here, you can take away this massive if else statement and you can just say um, the array at i and then it'll access that specific color. So you'll still have to go through and declare what um, each position of the array uh, is, but you can at least get rid of this if statement. So that's something that you can try on your own time. All right, so now that we've got our rainbow drawn, the next thing we'll need is to draw the bus. So just come down here. And it's not gonna return anything. Um, so we're just gonna say void. For the time being, we won't give it any inputs. Um, so for this one, we will start by just simply drawing the bus. So we won't worry about the movement for the time being. So we know that first we're gonna need a rectangle. Um, and I'm gonna put the rec mode in the center. Okay. And then we'll draw our rect. Um, and I'm going to specify a specific X position for our rect because we know that later that X position is gonna to need to move. Um, so we do need to create a variable for it. So I'm going to make this input bus x. Um, and then we're going to come into here and we know that the x is going to be at bus x. Um, and then we know that the, um, the y position, we want the bus down at the bottom. So we're going to go all the way down to the height and then we're going to subtract whatever our bus height is. So I'm gonna come up here and create a new variable for the bus height. And we'll call it like height over 10. Um, so now for that Y position, I'm, I'm down at the bottom of the screen at the moment and then I gotta bump it up a little bit. So I know I gotta bump it up um, the bus height over two. And we're saying over two because we specified that um, that point is gonna be drawn at the center. And then um, I'm gonna create a new, for the width, I'll create a new integer, bus width. And we'll call it, um, let's see, how long did I make the bus before? Let me just double check my numbers. We'll call it width over five. And some of this I just kind of figured out and calculated before so we don't have to waste time guessing and checking. Um, but when you guys do this, you can just go through and kind of guess it and check it and see how it goes. And then, um, oops, we can actually come in here and just say bus width. And then we already have a height, so we'll just say bus height. All right, um, so now we can, we'll go in and we'll just put in some simple, um, like filling it with zero and no stroke. All right, so now we can check this. Um, so we have to come back up to the draw and we have to actually call it. What would we call it? Us. Oh, 
and we need an X position. So we'll just put it at the middle of the screen for the moment to see what it looks like. So we've got the body of the bus. So now we'll draw the wheels. We know that we're going to have to bump up the body of the bus a bit so we can actually see the wheels, but we'll do that in a minute. So we know that we're going to need two ellipse functions um, for the X position and the Y position. We know it's going to be um, the uh, bus X that we're given because the wheels need to move. Um, the wheels need to move with the bus, so we're going to use this bus X. But then we know we need to uh, push it back a little bit and push it up a little bit so that the wheels are actually separated and not in the middle of the bus. So we'll subtract it by the bus width over four. And we'll just do that for the second wheel as well, but we'll add that one. And then we know the, um, the Y position. We have to do the same as what we did with the bus body and we need to go down to the bottom of the screen and then bump it up from there because we want the bus to be along the bottom. So we'll call our height for both of these and then we're going to subtract some number from it to bump it up a bit. Um, so now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a new variable for the wheel radius. And we'll say that the radius of the wheel is like the, the butt's width divided by six. Because we want the diameter of the wheel to be about a third of the bus. So we want that radius to be divided by six. So now we can come in here um, and we know that we're gonna have to subtract the wheel radius from the height to get it up above the um, the bottom of the screen. And then we'll come up here and then we know that the length and the height of the um, ellipse is going to just be the wheel radius times two. twice so we can just copy and paste this there we go so now we can check how we've done so now we see we don't even see the wheels because we only have the um, body of the bus um, bumped up just enough so you can see it on the screen so now we got to bump it up a little more so here we need to um, look at the y position and along with the height of the bus, we need to also add the wheel radius. So now when we run this, we can see the two wheels and we can see the body of the bus. So this is good enough of a bus for me. If you want to go through and add some more stuff, absolutely go for it. Um, but just recapping what we have so far. So we created these um, local variables, the bus height, the bus width, and the wheel radius. Um, within our function and this allows us to use these within our function So if I were to want to change the size of the bus, I can easily do so right in here um, And instead of having in here to say like height over 10 width over 10 having hard-coded numbers anything like that We can clearly see that. Okay. This is the bus height um, And we can clearly see this is the bus width So we've got those local variables there for us to use um, and then we've also got this um, input here bus X that is later going to be a global variable because we know we're going to have to control the movement of the bus um, as we um, keep drawing the code. So we're going to, when we call bus, we need to put in our bus X position um, so that we can later control that movement. Um, so now let's go in and we will work on actually controlling that movement. Um, so we know that if we want to animate anything, we need to do it up here and draw. Um, so we will just create a new global integer um, and we'll call it the xpos and we're going to set it equal to the width because we want the bus to start over at the right side of the screen and then we want it to move through um, the screen going left. So we'll set it equal to width um, and we should actually probably do that in setup so we'll do that down here in setup. Um, all right, 
then we can come in here and we can put our XPOS into here. So now it's no longer hard coded. And then we can just update our XPOS. Oxip, sorry, we'll have to subtract it because we're going through the screen left. If we were going right, then we could add, um, add one. But since we're going left, we'll have to subtract one. And we can try this out, make sure it works, and it does. Um, so the last thing that we'll need to do is um, just make sure that once it hits this edge of the screen, it's going to come back up on the other side of the screen and restart the animation. Um, so now for this, we'll just have a, a statement. We'll just say if the xpos is less than or equal to um, the, we'll say zero, because once it gets to the left of the screen, um, then we want it to restart. We'll say then the xpos is equal to the width again. So we can run this and try it out. Um, so you'll see that the one issue that we get with this um, is because our XPOS is at the center of the bus, it's going to kind of jump. And uh, once it hits the center of the bus, it'll pop back over instead of like cleanly going through um, the animation. So for this, I'm going to create another local variable because we need to keep track of the length of the bus so that we know once the entire length of the bus is off the screen, then we can start it over. So I'll create a new local variable that's the bus length. And we can come back down here. And before we made this bus length um, or the bus width um, a local variable, but now that we need to use it in other parts of our code, we're going to make it a global variable. So before we know we set it to width over five. So we'll just put that into here. Um, and then we can come down here and we're going to take this out as a local variable and now we need to use it um, as a global variable. So instead of having it in here, we're going to put it in here as an input. So now we need to come up and adjust um, where we call bus. So we've got the xpos in here, but now we also need to add the bus length. So now we can change the length of our bus if we wanted to. And when we run our code, we'll still be able to know, okay, once it goes fully out of the screen, then restart. So now we just have to come into here and adjust our xpos. So instead of being um, at zero, we're gonna say at the bus length. And we're gonna make it over two because our rect mode um, the position we were keeping track of for the bus was at the center of the bus, so we don't need the entire bus length, we just need half the bus length. And we need this to be the negative value. All right, and then we don't want it to start again at the width, we want it to start at the width, and then we want to scooch it over enough so it doesn't come into the screen when the animation restarts. So we're going to add that bus length over to. Um, so I think we fixed everything. We'll just run this now and make sure this works. So our bus still looks good. The length of it still looks like how it should. And we'll just check that it restarts, and it does. So now, because um, we've added in that global variable of the length of the bus, um, we know that it's not going to restart until it completely gets out of the screen. So if we were to keep that variable as a local variable here in our bus function, um, then we wouldn't be able to access it anywhere else to be able to see how long is our bus. Um, so that's why we moved that into a local variable. Um, so just keep recapping what we've done is um, we've created a couple different functions here. We've created um, this rainbow function that keeps track of um, or just draws the static rainbow for us in the background. Um, and you can get creative with this. Um, you can take it a step further and put um, as we talked about before, all of these color uh, variables in, a, in, a, in an array, and then you can access them in this for loop so that we could take away this if statement um, or these multiple if statements. Um, and then we drew the rainbow down here. 
um, and then we were able to call the rainbow every time we um, run the draw function and then we also have our bus function um, and this includes these global variables of the x position so we can uh, control the movement of the bus across the screen as well as the length of the bus so we know um, once the, bu the bus gets out of the screen we can restart it and we know that it's going to be accurate and that it's going to work because we've used this global variable um, and we've written this if statement here and put it um, back into the right position when we want it to restart. And then we've got our bus function down here that just draws our bus and we were able to kind of calculate where everything was. Um, if you had any issues with any of the rectangle or um, the ellipse functions or like if you had issues understanding where we put the wheels and where we put the body of the bus, um, just draw it out on a piece of paper and kind of um, go off of this code and, and write down how many pixels it is and what's happening and, and do these calculations so you fully understand what's going on. Um, and then in here we've introduced some local variables um, to help kind of just make the code a bit more um, organized and so that we can understand it a bit better. Um, as well as we've got these inputs that were coming from our global variables. Um, so hopefully this helped guys. Try and get more creative with it. See how you can maybe make it a, uh, a bit more um, understandable or how you maybe can improve the algorithm for it. Maybe add in some fun features. Um, but the best practice that you're ever going to get is just going off and doing some fun things on your own. So hopefully this helped.